From smearing their slaves with honey to cutting your nose off, you probably won't find yourself wishing that you'd live during these times. I'm Bob from World 5 List. Join me as I take you through an exploration of nine crazy things about ancient Egyptians that you'll be glad you're not learning about firsthand. Number 9. People shaved to avoid lice Now, at almost any given time in ancient Egypt, lice infestations were at epidemic levels. Maybe you experienced a lice outbreak happening during your school years or maybe at summer camp or something. But, however, in Egyptian times, it was a whole lot worse. In fact, the only way for people to avoid catching lice in ancient Egypt was to remain as hairless as possible. Even royal tombs became infested with lice because the pests flooded out from the remains of recently deceased rulers. Lovely visual picture, right? Archaeologists have also found lice in mummified corpses. Remedies that were available at the time were either ineffective or a total hassle, leaving men and women alike with but one choice – to shave their bodies from head to toe. Now, because ancient Egyptians valued fashion, especially among the upper class, it was actually common for both men and women to wear wigs. The hair pieces were discarded and replaced once they inevitably became infested with lice. Number 8. Smearing Slaves with Honey to Keep the Flies Away Now, learning about how Pharaoh Pepe II kept flies away makes me thankful for modern insect repellent. Now, apparently, the pharaoh despised flies, actually so much so that he smeared naked slaves with honey and made them stand in a nearby room. That way, all of the insects would stay away from him and then flock to his servants. Experts speculate that the pharaoh, who assumed the throne at a young age of 9 years old, ruled for anywhere between 60 to 90 years. That's a super long time to suffer any slaves that spent the majority of their lives with him as their master. Number 7. Bizarre Methods of Contraception now, several methods of contraception, which are arguably ahead of their time, were available to the ancient Egyptians, and they placed a high value on medical research. One of these concoctions consisted of a mixture of acai gum, honey, and lint used to block sperm from reaching the ovaries. When compounded, the gum had the added protection of acting as a spermicide. Another such blocking mechanism consisted of tree leaves and crocodile dung. Birth control wasn't just for women either. Sometimes men even coated their private parts in onion juice to prevent unwanted pregnancies. Now, I don't recommend that you try any of these at home. It's only for information purposes. While one can only speculate when it comes to the effectiveness of these contraceptives, I'm sure that anybody who's watching can agree that abstinence was by far and large the safest and most appealing method in ancient Egypt. Number 6. The Royals? They practiced incest. In ancient Egypt, it was common for members of royal families to marry their cousins and siblings. Rulers believed that they were descended from the gods, and therefore, they procreated with relatives because it was thought to keep the bloodline pure. In 2010, DNA analysis proved that King Tut's mother and father were actually siblings and that the frail ruler was likely the product of several generations of inbreeding. Incest was a probable factor in the pharaoh's plethora of health problems, including a clubbed foot and a cleft palate. King Tut continued the family's legacy of incest by marrying his half-sister at the age of 10 in 1333 BC, the same year that he took the throne. Tut's wife gave birth to two stillborn daughters before his untimely death at the age of 19. In addition to contributing to the king's health problems, inbreeding may have been to blame for his stillborn babies as well. The damage doesn't end there, because while the cause of King Tut's death remains a hot topic of dispute, conditions that stem from incest have not been ruled out. Another one of Egypt's famed rulers, Cleopatra, was also the product of incest. Over a dozen of her ancestors had been married to siblings and cousins, and it was likely that Cleopatra's own parents were brother and sister. 
And of course, she carried on the tradition by marrying two of her adolescent brothers who served as her ceremonial spouses and co-rulers. Number 5. Laxatives for Beauty And before I get to them, you should really subscribe if you haven't yet. I'd love to bring you more awesome videos like this one in the future. Now, ongoing research on medicine during the times of the pharaohs has revealed the widespread use of laxatives among ancient Egyptians. It appears that constipation was one of the conditions at the time that really kept the doctors busy. Ancient Egyptians valued slim and muscular frames, but as you'll learn, they were no strangers to obesity either. The beauty standard may be one reason why they were so preoccupied with digestive health. Ancient Egyptians also used laxatives to treat a variety of health conditions, including diarrhea, because they believed that laxatives actually purged their bodies of illness. It was customary for ancient Egyptians to use a laxative made of castor oil for three days each month. Then they would spend the rest of the day going to the bathroom, something that probably wasn't very pleasant in the absence of modern plumbing. Other concoctions were sometimes used, including a mixture of spices, goose fat, and milk, which was boiled and strained prior to consumption. Figs, bran, and dates were also common laxatives. Number 4. Royal Women Were Left to Decay Ancient Egyptian mythology was fraught with sexual taboo, including instances of necrophilia. Some tales were actually used to explain both positive and negative aspects of their polytheistic beliefs. However, while necrophilia had its place in storytelling, it was not actually considered an acceptable practice among the mortals. According to Herodotus, when a royal woman would die, her body was left to decay for three or four days in order to prevent embalmers from inappropriate contact with the corpse. This wasn't just a practice. It was also the law, and there was a good reason for it. During a previous instance, an embalmer was caught in the act with the corpse of a female royal by his colleague. Now, it appears that people have been weirdos since the beginning. Number 3. Obesity was actually common Despite their fit, muscular physiques being the standard for beauty in ancient Egypt, many of the pharaohs were most likely obese. To say that ancient Egyptian royals ate a lot is actually an understatement. In fact, it was actually customary for pharaohs to feast up to three times daily on lavish banquets that were prepared by their priests. And the menu had foods containing high amounts of saturated fat, calories, and also included beef, wine, and cake. In fact, one pharaoh's remains indicated that she was extremely overweight and probably actually suffered from diabetes. Her, along with the remains of a whole lot of other ancient Egyptians, also had poor teeth, which was indicative of a diet excessive in carbs, and other mummies contained signs of obesity, like clogged arteries, folds of fat and skin, and bulging bellies, which have all been found. Now, to add to the evidence, medical texts about the dangers of obesity were being written as early as 1500 BC, and I'm sure the authors wouldn't dare tell the pharaohs that they were in bad health. Number 2. Extremely Harsh Punishments Now, in ancient Egypt, the deck would be stacked against a criminally accused person from the beginning. The justice system often operated on a guilty-until-proven-innocent basis, and police would beat their confessions out of the accused. Those who were found guilty were often outright murdered or subjected to horrific physical abuse before being sent to forced labor. For example, the crime of theft? Well, that got you 100 blows and 5 wounds, making today's typical punishments of fines and a day in jail really, really mild. Researchers have found bodies with injuries like gashes on the shoulders, acting as evidence that historical accounts of these punishments are actually accurate. Sexual crimes, of course, carried much heavier penalties than theft and other petty crimes, as cheating was considered taboo in ancient Egyptian society. Women who were caught in the act on their husbands often had their noses cut off. Men, on the other hand, were subjected to a beating of 100 blows. However, a man who would be found guilty of assaulting a free woman would face the punishment of castration. 
In all cases, people who committed sex crimes furthermore had a stigma attached to them. For crimes like grave robbing, the removal of limbs and even straight up execution were common penalties. And number one, the slaves buried with their masters. Contrary to popular belief, human sacrifice wasn't a regular practice throughout ancient Egyptian history. In the early days of ancient Egypt, ritual sacrifices of servants, known as retainer sacrifices, were a component to the burial process of the royals. Scientists have discovered evidence of these sacrifices, including numerous decapitated bodies and graves that date back as far as 3500 BC. More recent human remains were found in the tomb of King Hor Aha, which contained 36 bodies of men who were aged between 20 to 25 at death, and all who died by strangulation. His grandson, King Jet, had a whopping 318 bodies that were buried with him. Now, the unlikelihood that so many people died simultaneously of natural causes is what's led scientists to believe they were actually the subject of retainer sacrifices. In fact, the ancient Egyptians were so obsessed with the continuation of life after death that it was considered a privilege for a slave to be slaughtered and buried alongside their master, although it's likely that they were selected for sacrifice against their will and actually murdered. One of the reasons for these sacrifices would be the desire of the pharaohs to flaunt their power, even in their death. Thanks for watching. Aren't you really glad you didn't live during ancient Egyptian times? Let me know. And be sure to subscribe for more fascinating videos. I'll see you next time.